How's it going, people? Chapter 5 of Alma is kind of a mess. It's got one thing coming to pass, and it's a long chapter. It's just Alma Jr. rambling. Some of his ramblings are a little interesting. Yeah, if it's only coming to pass once, why am I pouring a beer? Because I think I can fortify this video a little by drinking to the Good Shepherd. Who gets mentioned a time or three? Enough. But, it does start off coming to pass. Oh, and, uh... David Bowie's instrumental work. Guy's a genius. Oh. That's a nice one. <laughs> Since there's only one drink. Now, it came to pass that Alma began to deliver the word of God unto the people, first in the land of Zarahemla, and from thence throughout all the land. Oh, may have an asterisk. About B.C. 83. So, it's the same date as it was in the last chapter. At the end. All right. We needed a, we needed a footnote for that. And these are the words which he spake to the people in the church which was established in the city of Zarahemla, according to his own record, saying, so Alma Jr. had a stump speech, that's what you're saying. <laughs> I, Alma, having been consecrated by my father, Alma, to be a high priest over the church of God and having power and authority from God to do these things, behold, I say unto you that he began to establish a church in the land which was in the borders of Nephi. Yea, the land which was called the Land of Mormon, which is just outside of Nephi, wherever the fuck that is. Yea, the land which was called the Land of Mormon, yea, he did baptize his brethren in the waters of Mormon. Is this a lake, a uh, river, stream, waters? A whole bunch of waters? Okay. The waters of Mormon. Yeah, I just think these Mormons could be bottling water and making a fortune if they just knew where the waters of Mormon are. Or Sidon, maybe. Drink Sidon. It's good for you. And behold, I say unto you that they were delivered out of the hands of the people of King Noah by the mercy and power of God and alcoholic beverages. I'm going to chase this scotch. Just, just because. Okay. 
Yeah, King Noah, mercy. Uh, and behold, after that, they were brought into bondage into uh, by the hands of the Lamanites in the wilderness. Yea, over and over again, the same shit. I say unto you, they were in captivity, and again the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. And we brought into this and we were brought into this land, and here we began to establish the church of God throughout this land also. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, you that belong to this church, have you sufficiently retained in remembrance the captivity of your fathers? Yea, and have you sufficiently retained in remembrance his mercy and long suffering towards them? His uncapitalized. I assume they mean God still. And moreover, moreover, have ye sufficiently retained in remembrance that he has delivered their souls from hell? Behold, he changed their hearts. Yea, he awakened them out of a deep sleep. And they awoke unto God in dreamland. Behold, they were in the midst of darkness. Nevertheless, their souls were illuminated by the light of the everlasting word. Yea, they were encircled about by the bands of death and the chains of hell. And an everlasting destruction did await them. Ah, and now I ask of you, my brethren, were they destroyed? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, they were not. And again I ask, you know, this sounds like one of those cheesy comic book ads I used to read as a kid, you know. You know, uh, do girls shun you? Do bullies kick sand in your face? If you answered yes to all these questions, send us money. We'll help you. Trust us. <laughs> Sounds just like that. Same kind of pitch. Have you? Did you do all you possibly could? Otherwise, it's not our fault. It's yours. Yeah, heavenly bureaucracy, apparently. <sighs> uh. The chains of hell that encircled them, were they loosed? I say it to you, yay! They were loosed, and their souls did expand, and they did sing redeeming love. And I say unto you, that they were saved. And now I ask of you, on what conditions are they saved? Yea, what grounds have they to hope for salvation? What is the cause of their being loosed from the bands of death? Yea, and also the chains of hell. Behold, I can tell you, did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Well, he didn't really impress me much, but I mean, obviously he's not asking me that, that question. We're, you know, thousands of years apart. So I can't communicate with him, but so he's not asking these questions of me. This is his stump speech to all the chumps gathered around the stump. Ah. And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God? And my father Alma believed them. And according to his faith, there was a mighty change wrought in his heart. Behold, I say unto you that this is all true. 
and behold, he preached the word unto your fathers, and a mighty change was also wrought in their hearts. And they humbled themselves and put their trust in the true and living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end. Therefore, they were saved. And now, behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your continents? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Yeah, that fuzzy feeling. <sighs> Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith and view this mortal body raised in immortality and thus corruption raised to incorruption and stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done to the mortal body. I say unto you, you, can you imagine that ye hear <laughs> voice of the Lord saying unto you in that day come unto me ye blessed for behold your works have been works of righteousness upon the face of the earth we're slipping in and out of modern and archaic time for a new uh, I think per adventure would be good about now I haven't seen per adventure yet that's a nice King James word. Peradventure, a long way to saying, perhaps, might be. <laughs> yeah, it ought to go in here. Uh, I say unto you, can you imagine yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord? saying unto you in that day, Come unto me, ye blessed, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Or do ye imagine in yourselves, wait, imagine to yourselves that ye can lie unto the Lord on that day and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth, and that will save you? Or otherwise, can ye imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God, with Joseph Smith probably at the right hand, with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt? Looking forward to that. I'm a little hazy. Yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness. Yea. Can I get that on a DVD? Blu-ray? <laughs> uh, yea, a perfect remembrance of your wickedness. Yea, a remembrance that ye have set up, wait, set at defiance the commandments of God. I say unto you, can ye Look up to God that day with a pure heart and clean hands. I say unto you, can you look up having the image of God engraven upon your countenances? Engraven? You mean like on a gold plates? What the fuck, dude? Now they want to carve on us. Yeah. I say unto you, can ye think of being saved when you have yielded yourself to become subjects of the devil? I guess not, except I haven't done either one. <laughs> yeah, there's more than two, two choices of nothing and nonsense. Uh, there's also reality, which we're still figuring out. So what? We don't know everything. 
<laughs> you run back to your fairy tales. Uh, engraven upon your countenances. I say unto you, can ye think of being saved when you have yielded yourselves up to become subjects of the devil? I say unto you, ye will know at that day that ye cannot be saved, for there can no man be saved except his garments be washed white. Yea, his garments must be purified until they are cleansed from all stain through the blood of him of whom it has been spoken of by our fathers. Guy hasn't been born yet. You want his blood already. Splattered all over you to get you clean. Symbolically. Yeah, I know. These garments are your body, right? Is that what you're saying? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah plain, plainly spoken, plainly written. Ah, uh, now I ask of you, my brethren, how will any of you feel if ye shall stand before the bar of God having your garments stained with blood and all manner of filthiness? Behold, what will these things testify against you? Behold, will they not testify that ye are murderers? Yea. You mean like if I'm killing billions of unborn babies whenever uh, ah, I'm a murderer? You're right. Uh, filthiness. And also that ye are guilty of all manner of wickedness. Not all of them. Not all of them. I'm selective. <laughs> Behold, my brethren, do ye suppose that such an one, such an one can have a place to sit down in the kingdom of God with Abraham who sold his wife twice and threw Hagar out with his son Ishmael because his chosen wife Sarah was going to pop Isaac out. <sighs> yeah, great guy. He didn't even think God could protect him, so he sold his wife twice. <sighs> and Isaac, who sold his wife to the same king that his dad tried to sell his 90-year-old wife to. Yeah. Either that's one hell of a doublet and triplet, or that's a con they just ran into the ground. <laughs> Great guys! Yeah. Oh, and Jacob. Yeah, Jacob. The guy who conned his ailing half-blind dad into tricked him into giving him his older brother's blessing. Then he rips off his father-in-law with a bunch of con artist tricks, marries all his daughters, uh, wrestles an angel, gets his name changed to Israel. I'm not too impressed with this gang. Uh, all right, uh, once more, verse 24. Behold, my brethren, do ye suppose that such an one can have a place to sit down in the kingdom of God with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. I think I covered that. And also all the holy prophets. You mean like, uh, oh, like uh, Elisha, the guy who sick bears on baby, on kids, because they were calling him Baldy, and who probably killed Elijah and just buried his body in the desert. And they just couldn't find it. No witnesses. Yeah. He was the uh, genocide messiah anyway. Fuck him. Yeah. Holy prophets whose garments are cleaned and all spotless and pure and white. Because they're guiltless for all their crimes. They feel no guilt at all anymore. Probably never did. 
I say unto you, Nay, you can't imagine that. I don't think I'd fit in. You're right. <laughs> except ye make our, except you make our Creator a liar from the beginning. Oh, really? <sighs> Game over. I, moving the goalpost there, right? Or suppose that he is a liar from the beginning. Ye cannot suppose that such can have place in the kingdom of heaven. But they shall be cast out. For they are the children of the kingdom of the devil. And now, behold, I say unto you, my brethren, ye have experienced a change of heart. And if ye have felt to sing this song of redeeming love, I would ask, can ye feel it now? That burning sensation. <laughs> Where the sun don't shine. Have ye walked, keeping yourselves blameless before God? Could ye say, if ye were called to die at this time, you mean like the Grim Reaper showed up and called me? Because people don't get called to die as far as I know, they just die. Called up to die at this time within yourselves that ye have been sufficiently humble that your garments have been cleansed and made white through the blood of Christ. Who will come to redeem his people of their sins? And he's full of blood. And he must have been a pretty big boy because they're, even though they're slicing those uh, wafers awful thin, I mean, he's held out for 2,000 years. They haven't run out yet. And there's no leaven in it, so it can't be the yeast. <laughs> Can you feel it now? Behold, verse 38, uh, 28. Behold, are ye stripped of pride? I say unto you, if ye are not, ye are not prepared to meet God. If you've got a speck of pride. Behold, ye must prepare quickly. For the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand. This was written like in 1830. Yeah, Jesus said the same thing. John the Baptist said it. Hurry up. <laughs> Leave your families. Don't have babies. It's almost over. <sighs> and it was for them. And Jim Jones and David Koresh. Uh, Behold, ye must prepare quickly for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand, and such, and, and, wait, and such, and one hath not eternal life. I like that new phrase you're using, trying to make it all sound antique again. And such, and one. <laughs> Behold, I say, is there one among you his, who is not stripped of envy? Oh, come on. I say unto you that such an one is not prepared. And I would that he should prepare quickly, for the hour is close at hand. This is verse 29 now, just saying exactly the same shit as 28 differently. Because we're slow and we need it hammered in. <laughs> uh, not prepared. And I would that he should prepare quickly for the hours close at hand, and he knoweth not when the time shall come, for such an one is not found guiltless. That such an one. <laughs> such an one. And again I say unto you, Is there one among you that doth not mock his brother, or that heapeth upon him persecutions? 
maybe a couple. Woe unto such an one, for he is not prepared, and the time is at hand that he must repent or he cannot be saved. Writing on gold. <sighs> Yea, even woe unto all ye workers of iniquity. Repent, repent, for the Lord God hath spoken it. Behold, he sendeth an invitation to all men, for the arms of mercy are extended towards them. He saith, Repent, and I will receive you. Yea, he saith, Come unto me, and ye shall partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Yea, ye shall eat and drink of the bread and the waters of life freely. Yea, come unto me, and bring forth works of righteousness, and ye shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire. For behold, the time is at hand that whosoever bringeth forth not good, good fruit, or whosoever doth not doth not the works of righteousness, the same have caused to wail and mourn. O oh, ye workers of iniquity, ye uh, iniquity, ye that are puffed up in vain things of the world, ye ye that have professed to have known the ways of righteousness, nevertheless have gone astray, as sheep having no shepherd, notwithstanding a shepherd, hath called after you, and he is still calling after you, but ye will not hearken to his voice. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd, I'm drinking to the good shepherd, Because he's a great excuse to keep drinking. <clears throat> the good shepherd doth call you, yea, and in his own name he doth call you. Well, that's probably why you haven't come. You haven't heard your name being called. That's kind of stupid to go look for somebody and call your own name out. <laughs> he called in his own name. He doth call you, which is the name of Christ! He was a carpenter, not a shepherd. Shepherd, That was David, dickhead. You get him mixed up. As far as I know, Jesus was never a shepherd. He was a... He might not have even been a carpenter. He might have been a mason. As in laying stonework and shit. He was a craftsman. Hearken unto the voice of the Good Shepherd. Very good. Ah. That the Good Shepherd doth call you, yea. And in his own name he doth call you... Oops, wrong one. All right, down here. Good. Uh will not hearken unto the voice of the Good Shepherd, because he's calling you by his own name instead of yours. If he's looking for you, he needs to call your name. Uh, to the name which ye are called, wait, hearken not the voice, to the name by which ye are called. So you're Christ also. Uh, behold, ye are not the sheep of the Good Shepherd, if you failed in any of those things. I guess not. That's David Bowie, folks. Instrumental. Genius. And now, if ye are not the sheep of the Good Shepherd, 
Of what fold are ye? Behold, I say unto you, that the devil is your shepherd. <clears throat> mm. And ye are of, of his fault. And now I s and now who can deny this? Behold, <clears throat> I say unto you, whosoever denieth this is a liar. And a child of the devil. For I say unto you that whosoever, you know, and anybody who criticizes uh, Scientology is a child molester, I understand. Anybody. Even a child. <laughs> you little child molester. How dare you say that L. Ron Hubbard isn't the grand poobah. <laughs> I might have to do Dianetics someday. I mean, on video. For I say unto you that whatsoever is good cometh from God, and whatsoever is evil cometh from the devil. That's verse 40. Someone should chisel that in stone. <coughs> yeah, chisel that in marble. That's one for the ages. I missed one. Uh oh. Now I'm chasing beer again. Oh wait, I'm not quite ready. Therefore, if a man bringeth forth good works, he hearkeneth unto the voice of the good shepherd. Didn't want to jump the gun. And he doth follow him. But whosoever bringeth forth evil works, the same becometh a child of the devil. For he hearkeneth unto his voice, and doth follow him. And whosoever doth this must receive his wages of him. Therefore, for his wages he receiveth death. As to things pertaining to righteousness, being dead to all good works. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should hear me, for I speak in the energy of my soul, for behold, I have spoken unto you plainly that ye cannot err, or have spoken according to the commandments of God. For I am called to speak after this manner according to the holy order of God. For is, which is in Jesus Christ, the holy order of God, yea, I am commanded to stand and testify unto this people the things which have been spoken by our fathers concerning the things which are to come. And this is not all. Do ye not suppose that I know of these things myself? Behold, I testify unto you. So he could have been not repeating himself all this time. This is a long-ass chapter, damn it. Just say what you have to say. We already heard the other guys. Don't start quoting them all, dickhead. This is not all. Do, you not, do ye not suppose that I know all these things myself? Behold, I testify unto you that I do know that these... Th that these things whereof I have spoken are true. And how do ye suppose that I know of their surety? 
Behold, I say unto you, that they are made known unto me by the Holy Spirit of God. Behold, I have fasted and prayed many days that I might know these things of myself, and now I do know of myself that they are true. For the Lord God hath made them manifest unto me by his, capitalized, not his, but Holy Spirit. His is uncapitalized. H. You know, his is uncapitalized. But H and holy is, and spirit is also. Yes, it's capitalized. Ah, oh, I thought I had a bunch. And this is the spirit of revelation which is in me. And moreover, I say unto you that if it, wait, say unto you that it has been revealed unto me that the words which have been spoken by our fathers is true. Even so, according to the spirit of prophecy which is in me, which is also by the manifestation of the Spirit of God. I say unto you that I know of myself that whosoever I shall say unto you concerning that which is to come is true. And I say unto you that I know that Jesus Christ shall come, yea, the Son of the only begotten Father, Son, only, begotten, and Father all start, are all capitalized. Strange choice, but His, referring to God, isn't. Full of grace, and mercy, and truth, and behold, it is He that cometh to take away the sins of the world, yea, the sins of every man who steadfastly believeth in his name. And now I say unto you that this is the order after which I am called, yea, to preach under my, unto my beloved brethren, yea, and every one that dwelleth in the land, yea, to preach unto all, both young and old, both bond and free. I don't hear of a lot of slavery here. Bond means slave, right? Both bond and free, which is used in the New Testament, like in Acts, and in the epistles, I believe. Both bond and free. Okay, fine. <sighs> I lost my place, excuse me. Yea, I say unto you that the aged and also the middle aged and the rising generation, yea, to cry unto them that they must repent and be born again. But you don't get breastfed this time, sorry. <laughs> kind of a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yea, thus saith the Lord, Repent, all ye ends of the earth, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand. Yea, the Son of God cometh in his glory, in his might, majesty, power, and dominion. Yea, my beloved brethren, I say unto you that the Spirit saith, Behold, the glory of the king, capitalized, of all the earth, and also the king, capitalized, of heaven, shall very soon shine forth among the children of, of men. And, and also the Spirit saith unto me, Yea, crieth unto me with a mighty voice, saying, Go forth, and say unto this people, Repent. For except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, the Spirit saith, Behold, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. Yea! 
<laughs> a fire which cannot be consumed. Who consumes fire? He, no fire can be consumed. It'll burn your stomach and everything else. <sighs> How do you... A fire that can't be consumed. Whatever the fuck that means. I thought fires consume things. <sighs> I'm sure that that's just some lay, lame way of saying it won't burn out. <sighs> Even an unquenchable fire it just goes on and on. Behold and remember the Holy One, capitalized, capitalized, hath spoken it. And now, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, can ye withstand these sayings? Yea, can ye lay aside these things and trample the Holy One under your feet? Yea, can ye be puffed up in the pride of your hearts? Yea, will ye still persist in the wearing of costly apparel and setting your hearts upon the vain things of the world, upon your riches, when you could be giving it to the LDS or any other, you know, Kingdom Hall, whoever, all those people. You got to have faith in all this bullshit, but only one of it's true. I think not. None of it. Yea, will ye persist in supposing that ye are better one than another? Yea, will ye persist in the persecution of your brethren who humble themselves and do walk after the holy order of God, wherewith they have been brought into the church, having been sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and they do bring forth works which are meet for repentance. Yea, and will you persist in turning your backs upon the poor? <sighs> All that build up for that? And the needy, and in withholding your substance from them. And finally, all ye that will persist in your wickedness, I say unto you, that these are they who shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, except they speedily repent. And now I say unto you, all you that are desirous to follow the word, the voice of the Good Shepherd. I didn't even see that one. God damn. Ah, I missed that one. Sneaky. Oh shit, there's a few more. I think I'll pour a beer instead. Besides, I'm out of scotch. See, I'm scanning ahead, but I'm trying not to read because I want to read it cold. <sighs> uh, come ye out from the wicked, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean things, like people with dark skin and shit, like that, and, you know, anyone else who's different in some way, unclean things, and behold, their names shall be blotted out, because they're unclean, for various reasons, no doubt, and their names, and uh, that the names of the Wicked shall be numbered among the names of the righteous, that the word of God may be fulfilled, which saith, The names of the wicked shall not be mingled with the names of my people. <coughs> For 
For the names of the righteous shall be written in the book of life, and unto them will I grant the inheritance of my right hand. And now, my brethren, what have ye to say against this? I say unto you, if ye speak against it, it matters not. For the word of God must be fulfilled. For what shepherd is there among you, having many sheep, doth not watch over them, that the wolves enter not and devour his flock? And behold, is a, if a wolf, wolf enter his flock, doth he not drive him out? <coughs> Yea, and at last, if he can, he will destroy him, that wolf, that big bad wolf. And now I say unto you that the good shepherd uh, doth not call after you if you will hearken unto his voice, he will bring you into his fold, and ye are his sheep, and he commandeth you that ye suffer no ravenous wolf to enter among you, that ye may not be destroyed. And now I, Alma, do command you, in the language of him who hath commanded me, that ye Observe to do the words which I have spoken unto you. I speak by way of command unto you that belong to the church and unto those who do not belong to the church. <coughs> I speak by way of invitation, saying, Come and be baptized in, unto repentance that, that ye also may be partakers in the fruit of the tree of life. Join us. Anyway, that was a bitch. Chapter 5 was interesting. <laughs> so, see you guys in chapter 6. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is might be having. Goodbye.